So let's start where my nickname came from, Kim Possible. Oh. Uh, yeah, one of my uh, good friends uh, who kind of kicked my butt when it came to being seen online and allowing my face to be seen uh, on videos and, and things like that, he said, you do realize that you can do anything, Kim. You, your nickname should be Kim Possible because you have such a wide range of experience and you can help so many people. And I was like, uh, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do video. And he helped me create my first 30 second video. And it went from start to finish. I had to redo it over and over. Uh, but it was uh, my uh, my launch into uh, really being seen online because as an introvert, I didn't want to be seen. Uh, I, I'm an introvert entrepreneur. And I know a lot of people are like, but I see you. On yeah, I had to get over myself. And, um, and I have started coaching other introverts to uh, learn how to grow themselves and their business online. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and how long have you been podcasting? <laughs> I have been podcasting since the early 2000s. And it was before it was called a podcast. It was called Audio Zine, Audio Zine, but it was just audios that were uh, put online and people could listen to. I even found the old website where I used to uh, do the, uh, what you call podcasting. So now you, you coach on your podcasts, uh, you coach intro introverts. Uh, what was it called? Po po podcast called again? Um, Creative Introvert Entrepreneur Podcast. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a beautiful name. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's based off a book that I wrote by the same title, um, where I'm encouraging introverts to uh, push past the comfort zone and step into their greatness. There's an introvert in all of us, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, tell me, uh, what's your experience with podcasting? How, how did you get started? How did you launch? Um, how do you pull your traffic? Like well, I had, I had a friend who came to me and she said, way back in the early 2000s, she said, hey, I'm doing this new thing. I want you to want to see if you are willing to do this. And I literally learned how to edit my own podcast and how to uh, do all that. Now, that was back before there were podcasting services, hosting, directories, all of that. Now that uh, we have all these things that are available, it makes it easier to grow your podcast because you can use directories, you can publish so that um, directories pull in your feed and update your listeners. Uh, I also use services where I have a podcast blog post where those blog posts can be shared and others reshare it. So there are different ways that I use to uh, grow my uh, influence or grow my podcast and also by doing interviews. That's awesome. How did you get started? What's, what drove you into um, starting a podcast? Um, I mean, there's so many different platforms. You could <laughs> blogging, you could have been a YouTuber. Why podcasting? I love to talk, like but that. at the same time, I don't necessarily like to be seen all the time. Um, and that's that introvert in me. I push myself to uh, do uh, podcast interviews where I am going to be recorded, where I am going to be seen. And, and that's just something I know is part of growing the visibility of my podcast. Uh, but with me, I love to talk, but, um, and at the same time, I love to share my knowledge because I think the best thing uh, that, uh, that can help you is that you share your knowledge and you help others to get to know you and you help others to uh, 
uh, learn from your knowledge and grow their own business, especially uh, with me and, and, and uh, introvert entrepreneurs. Um, one of the things that I encourage introvert entrepreneurs with is this, that there is something inside of you that someone else needs to hear. So that means you got to get it outside of you so that they can learn and grow. That's amazing. Um, so what is involved? I know you've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. So you have more experience than most people. <laughs> what, what is involved in running a successful podcast? Um, strategy is the first thing I, I, I say start with. You gotta have a strategy and that includes knowing who you wanna reach, why you wanna reach them, what you're gonna reach them with, and then when and, and where, because, and how also. <laughs> if you don't have a strategy, then you're just throwing a bunch of noise out in the atmosphere, hoping that it'll hit somebody. Um, you need to know uh, why. What is your why? Why do you want to start your podcast? For me, it was to help other introvert entrepreneurs. What do you want to share with them? I want to share business tips on how to grow your business online that revolve around WordPress, social media, podcasting, email marketing. Uh, and, and, and you just go through and you answer those questions, the five W's. If you cannot answer them quickly and succinctly right off the top of your head, then you need to spend a little bit more time getting to know who you are and why you want to podcast. So um, what challenges have you run into in growing your own podcast and uh, which ones have you overcome? Uh, <laughs> podcasting is, uh, it's one of those things that you either love or you hate. And I love it. And it's a lot of work, I do admit. Um, one of the challenges I do face is that I'm a perfectionist and I want everything to be perfect before it goes out. I don't want anything to, to look weird. I don't want anything to go out that's not, that doesn't have all the T's crossed, all the I's crossed. And because of that perfectionism, I sometimes hinder myself from getting my podcast out. And that's something I had to deal with. Uh, that was a big challenge because I kept saying, well, I need to get this in place. I need to get that in place. I need to do this. I need to do that. Oh, oh, I need to do just push it out. Just push it out. Uh, get over the perfectionism. Everything don't have to be perfect because guess what? you can always go back and correct it. Just push it out, get it out there, get it done and start podcasting. That's awesome. Now, um, what platform do you use? And would you recommend, uh, would, what would you recommend to uh, someone that's brand new to podcasting? Mm -hmm. I know that with you, you probably have tried like many different things. <laughs> I have tried almost every platform out there, almost everyone. Okay. Um, and I recently moved at the beginning of 2021 to Captivate. Um, and that's because they allowed me to integrate my podcast. On the, it's hosted on their servers, but I can integrate it into my WordPress website easily. Oh. And that's important to me because I didn't want to just send people to another website. I want to send them to mine. Yeah. And I can give them uh, a link that uh, sends them directly to each and every episode, or I can give them a link that shows them my entire podcast. And it also allows you to embed it anywhere uh, where you can embed HTML, where there is an episode or your entire podcast. So I went with Captivate. And then uh, for editing and recording, um, for recording, if I'm doing it with someone, like I'm interviewing someone, I use Google Meet. And if I am just doing it by myself, I record it in Audacity. 
And then I do all of my editing in Audacity. And all of my image work, graphic design and all like that. I just had my, <laughs> my brand re redesigned and, uh, by my graphic designer. And, um, and so she gave me like a, a blank slate that I can put the title and put the people in and, and I can add other things to it. And, um, and so I used that, I used Canva to edit everything. So those, I, there are other tools I use, but um, I'm not going to go into them right now because it's a lot of them. Yeah, I love Canva. <laughs> oh, yes. So much, so much with Canva. Uh, so um, would you compare, how would you compare uh, Captivate with Buzzsprout? Because um, from everybody I've been hearing, either Captivate or Buzzsprout, which is why I, I because I wanted to integrate easily and seamlessly within my WordPress environment, I went with Captivate. And when I say integrate, it's not just um, embed code. I can actually go to my WordPress website and add a new episode. Okay. So I can upload the, uh, when I upload it to, I can be on the back end of my website and set up the entire episode without having to go to Captivate because of the way that their uh, plugin syncs between Captivate and WordPress. Okay. Buzzsprout, I don't think you can do that. I don't think so, actually. So um, let's see. I, I, I'm sure you um, interview experts on your podcast. I went mm -hmm. through and I saw that you, you talked to a lot of different people. How do you find people? Or how do you decide upon who you're going to interview? I just ask people. Uh, I have a two-step process for my interviews. The first one is I ask people, and this is something I just started, uh, which helps me um, to not only get audio going out as a, a short podcast, but it also kind of lets me know who I can interview uh, as a second time. So basically what I do, I have um, a link on my website where I have people who are interested in being interviewed by me. They fill out a form. They leave a voicemail that's up to five minutes. Mm -hmm. I then take that voicemail and make it into a podcast, a short one. Okay. If their short one, uh, the short podcast brings in traffic, people are interested in it and, and then I schedule a long interview. Because that way, doing it that way helps me um, not to, helps me, how can I put this in a nice way? Not to get duds. And what I mean by duds are people who, uh, they want to have a link showing that they've been interviewed, but they don't do anything to help publicize or get the word out about their podcast. And that to me is unfair. And it's one of those things that you kind of chance when you interview people. Uh, if they're not helping to spread the word, then I'm not going to have them for a second interview. So do you just interview people that have reached out to you then? Um, I interview people that have reached out to me or people that have responded to my um, request to interview people. So I do it both ways. So um, what methods do you use to monetize? Uh, which ones are working for you? Mm -hmm. And um, which ones would you never try again? <laughs> I do a lot of affiliate marketing. Okay. Uh, and I have um, affiliate marketing set up and that works best for me. I love using that. I, you know, it really uh, excites me when I get a notification. Oh, you, you made money here. And I go, when did I do so? Oh yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's really exciting to, um, to know that people are interested in the products that I, um, that I am an affiliate marketer for. Now I try not to, um, 
share products that I have never used or I'm not aware of. That's something I stay away from simply because um, e even though people say, I need you to, you know, share my, pro well, if I haven't used it or I'm not aware of it, I, I'm very leery of sharing people's products because I'm not here just to make money. I'm here to help the people who want to, uh, who want to learn from me. That's a great principle. Now, um, there's a lot involved in running a successful podcast. How do you stay organized? <laughs> um, in a former life in corporate America, I was a technical project manager, which means I had to manage people, projects, and technology. Uh, and with that background, it, it was just really easy and simple for me to go ahead and be able to uh, manage how I wanted things to progress. I, um, I have to see it in my head and, and then I say, okay, this is the end result I want. Now let's back it up to the beginning and figure out what steps I need to take to get to that end result. And I use a project management tool called uh, same page and I love it been using it I want to say two three years and I love it uh, and then uh, within there I can communicate with my um, with my team to make sure that everything stays flowing and not only that I use Google products to make sure that I am uh, managing everything that needs to happen in the podcast. I've talked to uh, two different groups of people. I have uh, those that run the podcasts themselves. In this group, I have those that are successful running the podcast themselves and uh, those that um, feel that they need a little bit more help. Now, you have a team, and um, mm -hmm. I've talked to people that have a team. Who is, what's the most important person to have included in your team? Someone who can be your second brain. Not, and, and this is not just someone that's a VA. I understand people like, oh, I got a virtual assistant. That's great. This person, regardless of what title they have, they need to be able to think like you, be able to make decisions like you, and uh, be able to help you manage your team, whether it's an online business manager or a virtual assistant or a project manager, whatever you call them, that person needs to be able to be your second brain. And they don't have to have all the skill set. They just need to know how to manage everything that you need to have done. That's the one person that I can say I cannot live without. Um, there are other people like my graphic designer. I love having her. Uh, she does all of my logos and my book covers and all that. Perfect. I can do graphic design, but I know me. That is not my forte. That's not my wheelhouse. Why am I going to operate where I'm not the strongest? I pay for somebody to do that for me. Um, graphic designer, uh, if you don't know how to edit audio, which I, is something I love doing, but I'll probably eventually um, uh, get someone to do it for me to free up my time. But right now I'm doing it. And, um, but an editor of your podcast is very important too. So graphic designer, editor of the podcast and someone who can be your second brain. Those are the three people I definitely say you need to have access to. If it's all one person, thumbs up on that. But those are the three things. If you're if you're going to need help, that I would definitely say you need experienced people doing. Tell me one thing that you never expected um, that came out of uh, having a podcast. Oh wow! Um, I would say it happened at the beginning of the year. I made one connection over on Facebook with the with someone who was in a group with me, and uh, it was the end of last year. And I wanted to do like this compilation podcast for introverts for World Introvert Day on January second. 
So I, I, I connected with this one other person in a group that I knew who was a coach for introverts. <laughs> she connected me with people from all over the world. So my compilation podcast has people on it who are from different walks of life, uh, who deal with introverts and from around the world. And it really, uh, that was the surprising thing to me. You never know who can connect you with whom. That six degree of separation, you never know. And, and, and I would say, um, as a podcaster, take advantage of that six degree of separation. I'm not saying you, you use people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you ask the people you interview, is there someone you would recommend? And that's how I ended up getting, uh, I think it was 14 people from around the world. Oh, that's amazing. Is there any best practices that you'd like to share? Oh, sure. <laughs> I always have best, best practices when it comes to podcasting. List, L-I-S-T, S. Lists are very important. You need to have your upcoming podcast list, your past podcast list. You need to have your, these are the people I want to potentially interview one day. Make a list of 20 people. No matter how big they are, make, put them on the list. If you want them on, on your podcast, you never know that six degree of separation. Um, so you have your upcoming podcast, your past podcast, and the people you want to interview. And then your wish list of of uh, things you want to accomplish with your podcast. So I, I would say um, those would be things that I would suggest people uh, do, especially when they're starting out, having lists that they can check off things when they accomplish them. That helps you to uh, see the progress you're making. So tell me four things that you've accomplished with your podcast. Uh, first is I launched it. <laughs> the second is I reached that uh, 1000 goal uh, before I uh, before I expected to last year, uh, 1000 downloads. Um, uh, the second, I would say uh, having a podcast that has that has become international and not just local, not just US based, but internationally. Is that four or is that three? I think you're at three. I'm at three. Okay, the fourth thing is um, being able to do something I love. One of the things I teach in one of my books called Your Passionate Business is to create a business around something you love doing. I love talking. I love helping others. And even though I'm an introvert, I love doing it on podcast. I'd rather do a podcast than a video. <laughs> okay. So um, there are a whole bunch of new people trying to start a podcast out there. I'm one of them. And um, what advice can you give to someone new to podcasting? Should they go ahead? Is it the right? Is it a good time? Are there too many people in the space now? Um, is it oversaturated? What, what, what advice would you give to someone coming into this? Is it I would tell them to start with my uh, simple strategic podcasting course. It's a course that um, that's perfect for newbies. I, I'm sorry, I was told never to say newbies by one of my BFFs. It's perfect for those who are new to podcasting. It uh, talks about all the things you need to have in place gives you a long list of resources. Uh, it gives you uh, examples of podcasts and, and directories. It talks about all the things you need to be aware of when it comes to podcasting. And, uh, and once they finish it, they'll go, yeah, I want to start. Or they'll go, I don't want to do podcasting simply because it, podcasting is not for everybody. However, if you have a desire to share your knowledge, and especially if you're an introvert and you don't want to do videos, podcasting is definitely the way to do it because you can actually take your podcast 
and put it on YouTube as a video. I, and that's something that's alone, you know, kind of farther down the road. But it's it's a way to grow your the pod, your podcast visibility is to actually create what is called an audiogram and get it out on social media. 